Hello everybody. Today it is my second lecture of the module 7. In the earlier lecture of this module, I discussed about the technique to solve a vibration problem where continuous system and lump parameter system both are involved. Today I will discuss a separate type of formulation known as state phase method that are used in various vibration problems to solve the uh, dynamic response to solve for the dynamic response to include some general category of parameters for example in case of principle of mode superposition that we have seen we notice that uh, without mass and stiffness proportional damping, the equation of motion could not be decoupled. So a case of general damping, which is actually called the non-proportional damping, that is uh, not proportional to mass nor proportional to the stiffness, cannot be incorporated in other types of formulation. So here I will discuss a formulation known as state phase solution method which can be used for general type of damping and actually in this type of uh, formulation the second order system of dynamic equation can be transformed into first order system so that the impulse response function as well as frequency response functions are simpler than the second order system and therefore the integration can be carried out with ease. Okay. So what I want to discuss today is the development of state phase equations, then eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the system. Then I will give the examples of single degree freedom and multi degree freedom system. Then I will prove whether orthogonality conditions of the eigenvectors in state phase method exist or not. So if this is true, if orthogonality condition is valid also for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that is found in state phase method, then we can conveniently use such type of formulation in decoupling the system equations. So what is state phase method? This method of dynamic analysis actually is useful for forming, uh, solving the first order ODE instead of second order ODE. Generally the dynamic equations are second order differential equations as we have seen even if you take a continuous system which is described by partial differential equation however after this uh, separation of variables we found that the time dependent equations are formed as with the help of this uh, mode superposition technique. So this time dependent equations which are ordinary differential equations can be solved with ease. But that was second order system. Now here instead of second order differential equation we will attempt to solve a first order ordinary differential equation. So let us examine what will be the advantage and disadvantage of such method and what benefit one can get by adopting the state phase method. This method however is very popular in type of uh, problems where the control of vibration is required, especially the active control of vibration has been solved by using the state phase method. Now here basically a n degrees of freedom system is characterized by n number of ordinary differential equations which will be now converted to 2 n number of equation that is it is double. So number of equations are double in this case compared to the earlier second order system. The n number of equations that are ordinary second order differential equation now is converted to first order 2n number of differential equation. 
and 2n number of differential equations are now called the state equations. But in 2n number of equations, the response vectors are displacement and velocity. So once we find the solution of the uh, response quantities, we will get together the two parameters, one is displacement and, and another is velocity. So state variables are obtained after solving such uh, uh, first order equation and simultaneously we get the displacement and velocity. This method is actually used in linear system because some linear transformation is used and result of such system when we uh, attempt to solve the free vibration equation leads to a complex eigenvalue problem. So complex eigenvalue problem actually produces the eigenvalues and eigenvectors which are complex. But in real system you will find the actual response should be real quantities. So since the complex numbers appear in complex conjugate form, so their multiplication and addition becomes a real quantity. So by virtue of this you will find that the actual response will be a real numbers. However, the complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors have some physical significance that we will discuss later in later part. Complex number actually give the information of magnitude as well as phase of the signal. So you will get the displacement of the particle as well as the phase of the particle simultaneously by complex eigenvectors. And the complex eigenvalues give the information about the damping as well as your the natural frequency of the system. So complex eigenvalue in one sense it gives simultaneously the model damping parameters as well as the natural frequency in a particular mode. First order equations compared to second order are easier to solve because the integration is less. However, due to doubling of the size of the complex number, uh, complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors, computational effort increase. And uh, the evaluation of complex eigenvectors may become tedious, but nowadays the MATLAB uh, codes or MATLAB tools have all the subroutines for finding the complex uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and dealing with the complex matrix. There is no difficulty to solve the system which is cast into complex domain. The state phase approach is very convenient for control problem as I have stated earlier in structural dynamics, especially for active control of tall buildings or bridges or any other complex formulation that is state phase formulation is essential. The case of damping of general nature because earlier when we decouple the system equation we have assumed that damping is proportional to the mass or damping is proportional to the stiffness or damping is proportional to mass and stiffness both and such type of damping was known as proportional damping. So in case of damping which is non-proportional especially the in uh, study of vehicle dynamics where the suspension damping is not proportional to the mass and stiffness in such a case the non uh, this type of formulation that stage phase formulation will be very helpful now as i have cited the proportional damping and non proportional damping let us see what is proportional damping uh, for linear analysis of dynamic problem we have taken that uh, damping is proportional to the mass that I have earlier also taken in single degree freedom system, multi degree freedom system. Also assumption is taken in case of continuous system. Now if the damping is taken as a linear combination of mass and stiffness, then it forms the best combination of proportional damping. However, damping can also be taken as proportional solely 
to the mass or damping is proportional only to the stiffness. So, such type of proportionality does not tally very well with the experimental results. So, let us see uh, what is actually the proportional damping. Suppose C is a damping matrix in uh, multi degree freedom system and M is the mass matrix. C is the damping matrix, M is the mass matrix and if damping is proportional to the mass, let us assume that C matrix is equal to A naught into M matrix where A naught is a constant. So that is still remaining unknown. Now since uh, for undamped mode of vibrations, we have seen that the orthogonality condition exists if the mass matrix is P multiplied by uh, transpose of the model matrix and post multiplied by the model matrix. So, P multiplying and post multiplying by the mth model vectors so phi m and post multiplying by another mo model vector phi n, we get here the vector phi m transpose into C matrix into vector phi n where phi stands for the eigen vectors and m and n subscript are used to denote the particular mode. So, here it is used for uh, the eigen vectors for mth mode, here it is used for nth mode. And similarly, the right hand side is also multiplied. So, a naught phi uh, of the mth uh, mode transpose into mass matrix into phi of the nth mode. So, you can see this is our known results from orthogonality condition and it diagonalized the mass matrix. So, therefore, we get here uh, this phi m t c phi n equal to a naught m if m is equal to n otherwise 0. Okay. So, if m is equal to not n suppose m is equal to 1 we have taken the model vectors for first mode and here we have taken model vectors for second mode. So, here the result will be 0, but if m and n coincides then it will not non-zero and it will be constant which is known as mn and that is known as generalized mass. So, mn is the generalized mass in the nth mode. Therefore, we can now write that a naught is equal to 2 j n omega n where j n is the model damping in the nth mode, omega n is the natural frequency in the nth mode. So, from this equation j n can be found as a naught divided by 2 omega n. So, therefore, uh, from this relation where the damping is taken proportional to the mass we have found that the damping ratio is inversely proportional to the natural frequency. So, if I draw a graph, if I draw a graph of uh, this the model damping and natural frequency, we will find that the model damping is inversely proportional to the natural frequency. So, in mass proportional damping. So, that is actually this is the case of mass proportional damping. Mass proportional damping. So, if one can assume that uh, the j n the damping ratio in the nth mode can be taken as a naught divided by 2 omega n where omega n is the natural frequency in the nth mode. So, therefore, assuming the j n or if the j n is found from the experiment in vibration uh, experiment from the specimen, then the a naught can be taken from this equation a naught is equal to 2 j n omega n and then C matrix can be constructed. Now, this is actually partially true, but if we now we look for the stiffness proportional damping, but let us see damping ratio for the other mode. 
if j and omega are known for other modes suppose we take a previously we have taken the nth mode now we are taking the kth mode if j and omega are taken for the kth mode then j k that is the damping ratio in the kth mode equal to j n into omega n divided by omega k so this ratio is the ratio of the natural frequencies of the two mode assuming that omega n is not equal to omega k so in that case j k is now given as the damping ratio of the nth mode into the ratio of the natural frequency of the nth mode to the kth mode now this is the scenario for mass proportional damping if i now assume that damping matrix is proportional to the stiffness then we can write c is equal to a1 into k where a1 is another constant p multiplying and post multiplying this equation by phi and t and phi m where phi and t is the nth uh, model vectors and its transpose is taken and phi m is the uh, model vectors in the mth mode you note that the phi here whatever we have written corresponds to undamped free vibration case so if i do this then we get here 2 j n omega n into m n where capital m n is the generalized mass so in the right hand side we will get a1 m n omega n square because of diagonalization of this matrix and this is possible because orthogonality condition is applicable here for the undamped mode of vibration so from this relation we get j n is equal to a1 omega n divided by 2 now you can see if we solely take this uh, damping ratio is proportional to the damping ratio is proportional to the uh, this natural frequency then we can see that it is linearly proportional to the natural frequency so here we get linearly proportional to the natural frequency so that is the stiffness proportional damping stiffness proportional damping earlier we have get we have got the mass proportional damping that is omega n j which is non linearly varying and uh, there it is mass proportional damping now when we take a linear combination of mass and stiffness proportional damping then we can write j n equal to a not divided by 2 omega n plus a1 omega n by 2 so from this relationship it is possible to evaluate the constant a not and a1 if we know the omega n and j n okay the coefficient j n and omega k for other modes say we have earlier written the relationship for j n now for other modes say kth mode we can write similar relation that is j uh, k equal to 1 by 2 omega k a not plus omega k by 2 a1 so based on that we can now write a matrix equation j n j k this is the vector equal to 1 by 2 omega n and this is the row first row then omega n by 2 1 by 2 omega k and omega n by 2 and coefficient a not a1 now in any dynamic problem when we construct the mass and stiffness matrix but damping matrix is not found from the properties of the 
materials that is known to us in general. So therefore, based on that assumption that the damping matrix will be proportional to the mass and stiffness, we can construct the damping matrix provided A0 and A1 the coefficients are known. That means if we correctly determine the A0 and A1 then C matrix can be constructed as a linear combination of mass matrix and stiffness matrix. So that is the usual way of the proportional damping that is taken in the uh, dynamic problem of various classes and that is known as Rayleigh's proportional damping. Okay. So it is known as Rayleigh's proportional damping. So that means uh, why this uh, combination of mass and stiffness is taken? The experimental data showed that variation of damping ratio with mass proportional or stiffness proportionality uh, is uh, matching better with the theoretical results. Taking the damping proportional to mass only or stiffness only will deviate from the experimental results. So therefore, we are taking that C is equal to A naught M plus A 1 K. Okay. Graphically, if I represent that in the x axis it is frequency ratio, in the y axis it is damping ratio, then the green color line is the mass proportional damping that is A naught by 2 omega n and the red color line is the stiffness proportional damping that is xi n is equal to A 1 omega n by 2 and combination of this is the blue line that is shown here. So generally we take this line for computation of damping. Okay. Let us give an example. We take a 2 degree of freedom system with damping proportional to mass and stiffness. Now given the mass and stiffness matrix, our uh, question is how to construct the damping matrix. So, the damping ratio in both the modes should be taken as 0 0.02 that is the given conditions. So, based on that let us calculate the mass matrix is given m is equal to 1 0 0 2 that is a diagonal matrix and k matrix is given 2 minus 1 minus 1 2. First let us find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. So, eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be found by equating the determinant to 0. So, minus omega square m plus k equal to 0. So, here this determinant is this 2 minus omega square minus 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 omega square and this determinant is equated to 0. After expansion of determinant, we get 2 omega to the power 4 minus 6 omega square plus 3. So, solving for omega square, this is a quadratic equation is in omega square. We get the natural frequency is omega 1 as 0.7962 radian per second and omega 2 as 1.5382 radian per second. Okay. So, <coughs> this uh, our requirement is that damping ratio in two modes are equal and damping ratio is taken 2 percent that is 0 0.02. So, that is xi uh, 1 and xi 2 and in this matrix here you are seeing 1 divided by 2 omega 1 then omega 1 by 2 and here in this second row you are seeing 1 divided by 2 omega 2 and in the uh, second uh, row uh, the last element is 1.5382 divided by 2 that is nothing but omega 2 by 2 into a naught a 1 that is a vector. So, we desire to know what is a naught and a 1. So, after solving for a naught a 1 from this uh, linear simultaneous equation, we get a naught equal to 0 0.02 and a 1 equal to 0 0.017. 
so two coefficients are coming different although the model damping ratios are assumed same so now knowing a0 and a1 we now construct the damping matrix c equal to 102 into mass matrix so mass matrix is 1002 plus a1 0 0.017 into stiffness matrix 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 and after uh, doing this um, addition matrix addition basically we are getting 8.054 minus 0 0.017 minus 0 0.017 0 0.074 you can also note that damping depends on uh, the stiffness matrix as well as mass matrix and these are linear combination of mass and stiffness matrix so therefore since the stiffness matrix and mass matrix are symmetrical so damping matrix also shows symmetry in the uh, in their uh, disposition of the elements so you can see that c matrix is completely symmetrical now let us uh, do the state space equation for mdf system with general case of damping okay we have uh, this uh, capital M that is the mass matrix into R double dot T plus C C is the damping matrix R dot T plus K RT equal to FT where RT is the response vector FT is the generalized stochastic force or it may be deterministic force also in general it can be any type of force so it can be deterministic or stochastic type of force okay and m c k are the mass damping and stiffness matrix respectively so what i did uh, to convert into state space equation p multiply by m inverse after p multiplying by m inverse we are getting i that is the unit matrix into r double dot t plus m inverse c r dot t plus m inverse into k r t equal to m inverse f now to find the eigenvalue and eigenvectors of the system let us consider the case of free vibration so we take f t equal to 0 so therefore this our system equation now becomes without f t so f t is not there and if we write only this r dot vector i is a matrix which is unit matrix so i matrix is like that for n degrees of freedom system all diagonal elements are 1 and these are the 0 ok so inverse of i matrix is same so therefore uh, when i uh, write this r dot t and transfer this on the other side the equation for free vibration becomes r double dot t that is the acceleration of the generalized coordinates equal to minus m inverse c into r dot t minus m inverse k r t so now let us write this because this is a second order equation so we want to con convert this to first order system because here the number of equations are n all this matrix size is n by n here and vector is n cross 1 so therefore we want to convert in a system where we get 2n number of equations so now let us assume a variable y dot t 1 equal to y t t y t 2 subscript 2 so that is one variable that is velocity equal to y t 2 so y t 2 is the first derivative of y t 1 will give you y t 2 therefore y dot t 2 can be written as minus m inverse c t into y t 2 minus m inverse k t y t so we have converted this system 
and uh, we have assumed earlier that yt1 is equal to rt and yt2 is equal to r dot t. So therefore replacing this r dot t as yt2 and this rt as yt1 we now write this equation. So now this equation can be written in the matrix form whose size will matrix size will be 2 n by 2 n and vector size will be 2 n cross 1. So y dot t 1 y dot t 2 here we can see that we have written in this vector line and now in the if I construct a 2 n by 2 n matrix. So in the first row and this is our the response vector y t 1 and y t 2. So you can see here that in the first row it will be 0 and then i obviously that is a unit matrix. In the second row you are getting that minus m inverse into k of course this will not be a function of t in general. In general k is not a function of t here we are taking m c k are independent of time. But there are certain problems where certain problem except m c and k becomes the independent of time independent on time. So here we are assuming that m c k are independent of time. Okay. So from these two equation we now form a state equation y dot t1 y dot t2 equal to 0 i and minus m inverse k minus m inverse c y t1 and y t2. You can see here that matrix if I partition this block is n plus n this block is n plus n and this block is n plus n this block is n plus n. So size of the matrix is twice n plus twice n and size of this matrix is vector is twice n into 1 this is also twice n into 1. So this is the state equations. Now for free vibration suppose in general we call this vector as y vector and this matrix is consisting of system parameters only and we call it a, a matrix whose size is 2n by 2n and uh, this, is, this is the derivative of the, uh, the state variables and here these are the state variables. So what we take here the free vibration equation we are taking y dot t plus a y t equal to 0 and a matrix is 0 of course 0 is a null matrix here also if you write in a matrix form it will be n by n matrix and here it is unit matrix and minus m inverse k minus m inverse c. Now to solve the free vibration equation let us assume that y t equal to u into e to the power alpha t where alpha represents the natural frequency. Now in this alpha not only the natural frequency other parameter this damping will also be plugged plus damping is there because it is a complex system so we are taking that there is a phase difference. So complex quantity always give the information about the phase. So this um, matrix if I substitute this here we can write a u equal to alpha i into u where i is your this i is unit matrix i is unit matrix and u is the vector that represents the mode shapes ok. So this is a standard eigenvalue problem it may be seen that matrix A is not symmetrical you can see here the A matrix is not symmetrical. So this type of problem actually not similar to the eigenvector analysis eigenvalue analysis that we 
come across in case of uh, undamped vibration where the mass and stiffness matrix were symmetrical. But here when we go to state space approach we are seeing that A matrix is not symmetrical that you should note it. So therefore eigenvalues will appear in complex numbers. But the eigenvalues will appear in complex conjugate. So for 2n eigenvalues there are n eigenvalues and another n eigenvalues will be complex conjugate of the corresponding eigenvalues. This defines the standard eigenvalue problem of dimension 2n by 2n. In this case the solution again yields 2n values of eigenvalues. So eigenvalues we are denoting it by alpha. Alpha a i is the eigenvalue at the ith mode that will either be real or complex number. 2n eigenvalues that appear in complex numbers give information about natural frequency and modal damping ratio. 2n eigenvalues that we are getting that we will get in complex number and it will give the information about the natural frequency and modal damping ratio. Now corresponding to each eigenvalue, eigenvectors will be real or complex. Now generally the real eigenvectors you may get it but when you get the real eigenvalues then complex part is uh, imaginary part as um, uh, zero number in that case the rigid body mode is possible but here in a system which is uh, the adequately restrained there is no possibility of rigid body modes so therefore eigenvalues will consist of real as well as imaginary numbers but they will appear in complex conjugate corresponding to each eigenvalue eigenvectors will be real or complex eigenvectors may be real or complex although the eigenvectors and eigenvalues are complex but the physical response will be real because of the fact that addition of two conjugate numbers and product of them are real quantities now let a pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues are represented by say here we take the k mode and k plus 1 mode. So in kth mode the eigenvalue say lambda k is written as j k omega k this is the real part this is the real part. And real part will appear with a negative sign. If real part appears as a positive quantity then in this system uh, that we have formed this stability will be hampered. There will be no stability because the exponential with a positive quantity multiplied by t will grow indefinitely with time. So therefore the real part should be always negative in the system we have formulated uh, with this uh, A matrix plus imaginary part. Imaginary part consists of omega k 1 minus j k square. In the other mode that is k plus 1 which is the conjugate of that. So conjugate of that is minus j k omega k minus i omega k root over 1 minus j k square. So the natural frequency omega k is now given by real number lambda k whole square plus imaginary part of lambda k whole square. So imaginary part of this is omega k root over 1 minus j k square and real part is this j k omega k square. So if you square it and then take a square root you will get the natural frequency. Damping ratio in the kth mode is actually found as minus the real part of lambda k divided by root over real omega k square plus imaginary real lambda k square plus imaginary part of lambda k square. So this is the damping ratio. Negative real part of eigenvalues will be an indication of the stable system. Now let us illustrate the procedure of finding the complex eigenvalue by a problem of 2 by 2 
2 degrees of freedom. So, let us take a 2 degrees of freedom where the mass matrix is 2, 0, 0, 1 and the damping matrix uh, is 1 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 and the stiffness matrix is 3 minus 1 minus 1 k. You can see the mass, damping and stiffness matrix are proportional. Uh, damping matrix is proportional to stiffness and mass matrix but even this damping matrix is not proportional to mass and stiffness the eigenvalues can be computed. Now we have to find this matrix M inverse C. M inverse C is found and it is found as product of 0.5 this the inverse of this 0 0.5 0 0 1 into 1 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 and it is giving you 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 m inverse k now giving as 0 0.5 0 0 1 into 3 minus 1 minus 1 1 these two matrix are multiplied and we are getting 1.5 minus 1 minus 1 0 0.5 because these two matrix are required to find the augmented matrix. So, augmented matrix is what? Augmented matrix is this. You can see the in the augmented matrix, the first block is null matrix, second block is unit matrix, third block is minus m inverse k and the fourth block is minus m inverse c. So, with that uh, quantities, we can now augment the matrix. So, augmented matrix A is found. So, first block you can see it is completely null matrix, second block you are seeing that it is unit matrix, it is actually the I matrix and other that you have seen minus M inverse K and this is minus M inverse C, this is minus M inverse C and this is minus M inverse K. So, this block is minus M inverse K and this is minus M inverse C. Now, the eigenvalues of this matrix can be calculated. Now, we use the MATLAB procedure. It is very simple. If you use the MATLAB, the calculation of complex eigenvalues or real eigenvalues, whatever may be, is very simple procedure. So, here we take n is equal to 2 because each block is 2. So, the matrix is written like that the mass matrix that we require M2001, C matrix 1 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and K matrix 3 minus 1, minus 1, 1. Here I have shown you the manually the formation of augmented matrix. But here you can uh, in MATLAB you can also augment the matrix. A is zeros n that means first block is all zeros that is null matrix that is i n size is n that is your uh, unit matrix then inverse m into k that is the inverse of m inverse k and this is inverse m into c ok. So, that procedure is written here few steps. So, then the eigenvalue command is there bracket b comma d where b is a, a matrix where the eigenvalues will be stored in diagonal elements and d will give you the eigenvectors corresponding to each eigenvalues. So, b comma d equal to i a that will calculate the simultaneously the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, here I am seeing uh, I have written only the result of eigenvalues, but eigenvectors can all also be extracted from this program and can be given here. So, V is written here the minus 0.417 plus 1.345 i. So, MATLAB result output will also be written in this way that is the imaginary number will be represented by the letter i small i. Then minus 0 0.417 minus 1.345 you can see these two eigenvalues appear in complex conjugate. 
and then minus 0.083 plus 0.705i minus 0.083 plus 0.705i so actually in the output you will get v is equal to it will stored in the diagonal element so it will be stored like this it will be stored like this and minus 0.0 so it will be stored in diagonal element but we have to identify this is nothing but the eigenvalues but it will not be arranged in ascending manner or descending manner you have to pick up okay you have to uh, pick up which is the lowest and which is the highest eigenvalue or you can arrange it in ascending order and descending order now from this eigenvalue let us get the information of natural frequency and mode shape so natural frequency is given here you can see this will this part of eigenvalue which are actually the same eigenvalue but this appear as a complex conjugate this is point minus 0.083 plus 0.705i minus 0.083 minus 0.705i so this will give you the lowest uh, value of natural frequency so by the formulation that we have done uh, the square of the real part plus square of the imaginary part and square root of this sum is equal to omega so this is giving you the lowest natural frequency is 0.71 radian per second similarly the second natural frequency is given as square of the uh, this uh, this eigen value anyone you take because this is square will be same quantity whether it is plus or minus so 0.417 square plus 1.345 square equal to 1.408 radian per second now damping ratios is found as xi1 is equal to 0 0.083 divided by 0 0.71 equal to 0.117 xi2 equal to 0 0.417 divided by 1.408 equal to 0.296 so one can find this a0 and a1 if anybody want to construct a damping matrix which is mass and stiffness proportional otherwise you can proceed with the state based formulation in stage based formulation also the mode superposition technique can be applied and orthogonality condition can also be proved so here i will uh, discuss how the orthogonality of the complex eigen vectors exist so the equations of motion of multi degree freedom system are actually coupled second order ordinary differential equations which can be expressed in matrix form as m r double dot c r dot plus k r t equal to q r in the earlier formulation we have uh, multiplied both sides of the equation with m inverse as a result of that we found the state matrix that is a which is uh, not symmetric and uh, symmetric formulation has advantage that you can uh, adopt the same procedure that we have adopted in under un system or uh, in the case of proportional dam system so therefore uh, in the for the under dam system where the eigen values and eigen vectors appear as a complex conjugate because m c k m c k are real and symmetric matrices so we take an advantage of symmetrical formulation so therefore we take an identity m into r dot t minus m r dot t equal to 0 so this is a simple identity that is taken to form the state space equation so this is the identity that we have taken and our earlier equation was m r double dot t that is the acceleration vector plus c r dot t plus k r t equal to q t the above equation can be arranged as if i uh, take this uh, r double dot and r dot here 
we can see that this vector we are uh, taking at r double dot and r dot and this is the state vector so r r dot so first part of the state vector is velocity and second part of the state vector is displacement and you can easily see from these two equation that first block is a zero matrix null matrix and then m matrix then in the third block that is a second row that is m matrix and it is c matrix from these two equation you can see this so this matrix is again symmetric matrix this matrix again follows the condition of symmetry then the other part will write minus m here it is coming minus m and 0 and 0 k that is r dot and r equal to 0 q t and again you can see this matrix is a uh, symmetric matrix this matrix is also symmetric matrix so state vector here is r dot and r so state space equation in symmetrical matrix will be a y dot t plus b y t equal to f t where f t is equal to 0 and q t and a matrix a matrix is here which is the coefficient matrix of the first derivative of y but y dot and y constitute the state matrix, state vectors so a matrix is here 0 m m c and b matrix is minus m 0 0 k here 0 is the null matrix so we are getting this first order equation now now to prove the orthogonality condition let us take the case of free vibration so if i take free vibration then qt is taken to be 0 and therefore right hand side is your uh, 0 that is the null vector the advantage of writing the equation in above form that matrix a this is the matrix a and this is matrix b are of order 2n and both the matrices are symmetric hence the techniques very similar to treatment of under dam system can be utilized free vibration let f t equal to 0 say then we are getting a y dot t plus b y t equal to 0 so for free vibration let us assume y t equal to u vector into e to the power alpha t substituting this here alpha equal to a u u vector equal to minus b into u vector so we are getting this equation after substituting y is equal to u into e to the power alpha t that means here we assume that y vector is u vector into e to the power alpha t where alpha t is the natural frequency of the system now p multiplying this equation this equation we are pre multiplying with b inverse so the result is b inverse a u and this will be a unit matrix b inverse b will be unit matrix into u and alpha we have taken here let d is minus b inverse a this is the dynamic matrix that is d similar to the dynamic matrix in uh, uh, this undam system k inverse k inverse into m so here we are getting d is equal to minus b inverse into a and let us assume p is equal to 1 by alpha so this equation can be written as d matrix into u equal to p into u u vector so this is a standard eigenvalue problem and uh, the standard eigenvalue problem will result in the eigenvalues 2n number of eigenvalues uh, pk is the eigenvalues in the kth mode and uh, corresponding to this eigenvalues we will also be getting the 2n numbers of eigenvectors now let us consider two different modes say rth and sth mode so in the rth mode let us take the eigenvalue is pr and sth mode let us take the eigenvalue is ps 
So take the equation for the rth mode. So rth mode equation is written alpha r into a matrix into u r. This uh, superscript bracket r represents the rth model vectors equal to minus b into u r. So this is the rth model equation in free vibration. P multiplying both sides by u s t. So what we have done here, this is the equation. So this equation, both sides of this equation is multiplied by u s t. So after multiplying this equation, we are getting alpha r u s t that is the uh, transpose of the eigen vectors in the asset mode into A. A is the matrix that we have formed here, a symmetric matrix into u into u subscript r that is the rth mode equal to minus u s transpose into b u r. So alpha r u s t into a u r equal to minus u s t b u r. Remembering that a and b are symmetric matrices. So if we take the transpose of this matrix both sides then A and B matrix will not be affected by transpose operation because they are already symmetrical matrix. Taking the transpose of both the sides we now get alpha R URT so that is exchanged here URT transpose A and US here. Similarly here B URT into us. Now take the equation for the asset mode and p, p multiply by this equation with urt. So asset mode equation that we are getting alpha s a us. So it is p multiplied by the vector urt. So p multiplying this equation urt, uh, this equation we are getting alpha s ur transpose a us equal to minus ur transpose b us. Now if you subtract these two equations we now get alpha r minus alpha s equal to ur transpose a matrix us equal to 0. Since r and s are two different modes so we are taking that uh, the alpha r is not equal to alpha s. So we are getting here the equation for orthogonality URT A US. So orthogonality equation is proved. Similar thing also be valid for the matrix B. So URT B US equal to 0. You see R and S are two different modes. Now for under the modes in which eigenvalues are complex, generally it will be complex and appears as a complex conjugate. The above orthogonality criteria relate two modes having different frequencies of vibration. Say one frequency is 20 hertz and another frequency is 30 hertz, so that will be valid. But in this type of system, this state formulation, the eigenvalues appear as a complex conjugate number. So you will get the 20 hertz frequency that we are obtaining in one particular eigenvalues same frequency will be obtained in its complex conjugate in its conjugate counterpart. So therefore this relationship is also valid for two conjugate eigenvectors in single mode that is very important statement. That is not only valid for the two different modes of having different frequencies but it is also valid for two complex conjugate eigenvectors in single mode. So let us see this. Orthogonality relationship is valid for two complex conjugate eigenvectors in single mode. Say so let us see alpha r is equal to a plus ib. So any complex number has two parts. One is uh, real and another is imaginary. So this is one eigenvalues. So complex conjugate uh, here we are taking the eigenvalues. alpha r is equal to a plus ib, its complex conjugate counterpart. 
alpha star represents complex conjugate. So, complex conjugate counterpart is A minus IB. So, if alpha R minus alpha R star is not 0, then again this uh, the orthogonality relationship that we have derived will be valid. So, let us see alpha R minus alpha R star equal to uh, subtracting this equation 2 IB is not equal to 0 because A and B a b is not 0 here because it uh, contains the uh, imaginary part also non-zero part. Hence, above statement is proved. So, for the single mode uh, between two complex conjugate eigenvalues, this uh, automatic relationship for uh, eigenvectors are also proved. Due to automatic condition of the complex modes, it become possible to decouple the equation of motion and same procedure in case of second order system that we uh, adopted can be followed. That is our intention is to utilize the orthogonality condition to decouple the equation first order equation of motion so that we can get a independent first order equation. Actually our equation was like that. plus b is equal to some force, but all are 2n by 2n size and this is 2n cross 1, 2n cross 2n, 2n cross uh, 1 and here also 2n cross 1. Of course, in this force vector, the first part is null vectors that is this is the force vector, augmented force vector and these are the augmented matrix. So, this is a couple differential equation. Now, with the help of orthogonality condition that we have proved now, we will see in the next class that this equation can be decoupled and the same procedure that we have adopted for force vibration analysis of the uh, multi degree freedom system in second order case can be adopted. And uh, this type of procedure is useful for a problem where the beam uh, and moving oscillator is interacting. So, this type of problem occurs when the bridge vehicle interaction problem, dynamic interaction problem is considered or even the damper that is tune mass damper or any other damper is placed at discrete location in a continuous system body. So, in control system as well as the bridge vehicle interaction problem, the state based formulation is very much useful. Okay. Let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, it was shown that the equation of motion in generalized coordinates, generalized coordinates are n numbers, can be transformed to first order equations of two n numbers the set of first order dynamic equations are called state space equation. State vectors are partitioned as two blocks. First block n cross 1 contains displacement or velocity depending on the formulation and the second block contains velocity or displacement in order. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors of 2n system appears as complex numbers. Real part is related to damping an imaginary part is related to natural frequencies. From the algebraic sign of the real part of eigenvalue, stability of dynamic system can be ascertained. In this lecture, we also derive the orthogonality conditions of the complex eigenvectors and that condition will be used in this subsequent class to decouple the equation of motion and to go forward for force vibration analysis of the system. Thank you very much.